Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily as we keep you up to speed on the most important developments in the global automotive industry. Toyota announced this morning that it is recalling 1.9 million Priuses worldwide due to a software glitch that can trigger the car to go into a limp home mode or even shut down completely. Toyota says the recall involves all Priuses made since March of 2009. It says software that controls the motor generator ECU can cause some transistors to overheat. In a separate recall also involving a software malfunction, Toyota is recalling 260,000 RAV4s, Tacomas, and Lexus RX 350s sold in the U.S. market. That glitch affects the electronic stability control in those vehicles. For a complete list of the model years affected by this recall, click the link in today's show notes. Boy, things are really starting to look up for diesel pickups in the American market. Yesterday, we reported that sales of diesels in the U.S. surpassed hybrids last month. Now, Wards is reporting that the next generation Toyota Tundra will offer a Cummins diesel. It'll probably be the same 5-liter V8 that Nissan will use in its Titan full-size pickup. Ram, of course, already offers a diesel in its 1500. GM will also offer a diesel option in the Colorado and Canyon pickups and Nissan is testing a diesel in the frontier. With more and more manufacturers turning to diesels, that ought to cut the cost of making them. But not everyone wants diesels. In an effort to reduce air pollution, China is extending subsidies for electric cars, sort of. Instead of slashing those subsidies as it planned to do, now China will just not cut them as much. Currently, the government provides up to nearly $10,000 for the purchase of a passenger EV. By 2020, China hopes to have 5 million EVs on its roads, but so far, sales are going nowhere. Meanwhile, Tesla would love to see those subsidies applied to its Model S. Right now, none of those subsidies applies to cars imported to China, but Tesla is hoping that Chinese authorities will see the wisdom of helping all electric cars become more popular by extending those subsidies to imports as well, or at least for the Model S. But as several academic studies have pointed out, 80% of China's electricity is generated by coal, so any increase in electric vehicles will actually make the air pollution there worse. And maybe that's why China wants to phase out those subsidies. Many people thought that Audi would be the first manufacturer with laser headlamps when it showed its Sport Quattro concept with them at the Consumer Electronics Show. But BMW says it'll be the first when the i8 hits showrooms later this year. The plug-in hybrid sports car comes standard with LED headlamps, but will offer laser high beams as an option. The lights feature a range of about 2,000 feet, that's around 600 meters, which is double the range of modern LED high beams. Laser diodes are also 10 times smaller than conventional light diodes, which means they can be packaged in smaller places, and they're about 30% more efficient than LEDs because they require less power. And I, for one, cannot wait to see if I can tell the difference between LED and laser head headlamps. The bobsled competition gets going at the Olympics in Sochi tomorrow. And coming up next is the third part of my interview with the guy who designed a radically new sled. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh, At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Michael Scully is the designer who created the new look for the two-man bobsled that will be used by the U.S. team at the Winter Olympics. I recently interviewed Scully at DesignWorks USA, BMW's advanced studio in California that is sponsoring the bobsled team. And here's part three of that interview. 
Jeff Bodine, formerly NASCAR driver, got heavily involved in helping the U.S. Olympic team develop a sled. I think we got some medals out of it, but not the gold. What do you think might happen with this one? Of course, we're hoping for the gold. Um, you know, that's that's obviously an, an objective. Um, but you know, it's uh, I think it's important to have measured optimism uh, as as we go forward and. Uh, not be complacent uh, in, in any way and we're, we'll c continue to develop the sled all the way up right until Sochi um, so that the, the athletes have the very best available. Any feedback on its performance so far? So far extremely positive. Um, we've been very very fast in testing. Um, we just won the first two races uh, that we've entered this year uh, in Calgary uh, at the North American Cup uh, with Nick Cunningham. So. That's, uh, that's fantastic, and we hope that trend continues. That's a very good first step, but of course, the European level of competition is more mm -hmm. intense than it is in the U.S. Mm -hmm. How do you think you might stack up? Well, the Russians were, uh, they were in, in Calgary as well um, for that race, um, so that's a, that's a good indication. They have a very, very strong team. Um, but I think you bring up a, an interesting point, which is that you really don't know really where you're at in terms of pace until you get into a racing context. And so we've used that methodology throughout the whole program. Um, and so the, the sled has entered competition at a very early stage, maybe before um, uh, one would normally debut something uh, uh, that, that potentially had new content. Um, but we needed to know how it performed really against the best sleds and the best teams in the world. And um, so we've, we've taken those inputs and then try to improve on it continually and, and use it as a, a learning experience. Michael Scully, thanks so much for taking your time to speak with me about the sled sure. and good luck in Sochi. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Pleasure. You know, DesignWorks USA is a great incubator for design talent for BMW. Adrian Van Hoydunk, who's now the head of all design at the BMW Group, ran DesignWorks before he got his current position. Hey, remember to join us for AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Our guest will be Bill Warner, the founder of the Amelia Island Concours. Should be a great show because Bill is one of the greatest storytellers you'll ever hear. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thank you for tuning in.